It's 5.48 p.m. on a Sunday here in Miami as I sit down at my desk and start writing. We've reached the time of the year where the second you step outside, you start sweating. I just got back from the coffee shop where I was hoping to find inspiration for this video and start this script, but I ran into a friend and forgot what I was doing. Sunday nights used to always make me anxious. The realization that Monday was right around the corner would start to set in and I'd begin thinking about the homework I didn't finish and the test I was unprepared for. That's when I'd start praying that I end up sitting next to Kevin, the smart Asian kid in my class who wrote big enough for me to copy his answers. Considering summer is right around the corner, it was also this time of year where I became completely checked out. It's like I wasn't even there. I'd wander around the halls, hitting a jewel pod in the bathroom, or just doing random shit to pass the time. This is one of many complaints I have with the traditional education system. It made me hate learning, and I also got into this habit where I'd always look forward to some future event where I'd finally get a break from the mundane imprisonment known as school. Even though I always found a way to get good grades, I absolutely hated the feeling that I wasn't in control of my time. My days were spent learning random historical facts, and it felt like a complete waste. Why the fuck do I need to know what the mitochondria is, and why am I listening to a fat, depressed, 50-year-old single woman with four cats and a Joe Biden sticker on her Prius tell me about the importance of Y equals MX plus GBTL. I've made millions of dollars online now and not once have I had to use the Pythagorean theorem or recite a line from the Declaration of Independence. I want those years of my life back. This is a bit of a tangent, but how the fuck did we all get scammed into participating in this? I don't know. But anyway, let's talk about something more positive. It's the one thing that I believe everyone owes to themselves. It's the thing that you need to avoid depression, anxiety, and hopelessness. It ignites a spark in your eye that you carry into every interaction and every moment in your day-to-day -day life. It makes you feel like you're not just drifting through life, going from one class to the next, counting down the hours until summer break or the weekend or the low budget annual vacation that you get to take to some shithole like Myrtle Beach. It's like Hawaii, but in South Carolina. No, it's fucking not. If you were in Hawaii, you'd be sipping on a coconut with models feeding you grapes, not inhaling secondhand smoke from some frat bro named Chad on a crusty beach in South Carolina. Anyway, it's the, the rush you get when you run back to your computer to act on an idea like you're Zuckerberg in the social network. It's the sound of the ball bouncing on the hard wood in an empty gym. It's the peace that you feel when your head hits the pillow at night and you can close your eyes knowing that you actually did something to move the goddamn needle that day. It's constantly on your mind, but in a good way. Kobe Bryant once wrote about the thing I'm referring to. It drove him to flip over a table, throw chairs, and break the TV in a hotel room. On March 19th, 1999, Allen Iverson scored 41 points on Kobe and the Lakers. Kobe wrote, working harder wasn't enough. I had to study this man manically, no diddy. He didn't actually say that no diddy part, but I had to add that for him, gotcha Kobe. I obsessively read every article and book I could find about AI. I obsessively studied his every success and his every struggle. I obsessively searched for any weakness I could find. This led me to study how great white sharks hunt seals off the coast of Africa. The patience, the timing, the angles. I wanted him to feel the frustration I felt. The next, next time Kobe played AI, he held him to zero points in the second half while scoring 18 himself in a Lakers win. He swore from that point on that he'd approach every matchup as a matter of life and death. And if another player's goals got in the way of his own, he said, I will hunt you obsessively. It's only natural. This story is from his post in the Players Tribune called Obsession is Natural. And this is the very feeling that I'm referring to. Obsession. <laughs> Bro, I spelled this shit wrong. Obsession is the constant energy that you feel when you are fully engulfed in a purpose. It's the way that you're naturally hardwired to be. Your ancestors used to spend hours on end building spears and shit to go kill wild animals so they could eat. Considering the fact that now all you have to do to get food is pull out your phone, click a few buttons, and next thing you know, some poor bastard named Quan is weaving in and out of traffic on a moped to bring your meal up to your air-conditioned apartment, I think that means that you can get out of bed and stop scrolling on TikTok to go find something worth hunting for in your life. Or your existence will be absent of anything meaningful. You'll constantly seek purpose without giving yourself an outlet to occupy your time. You'll feel a constant sense of anxiety as you know that the clock is ticking. You'll be lost and looking for meaning by becoming obsessed with politics or sports teams or some stupid cause that doesn't actually do anything. You'll become one of those people who spaz out on the waitress because your food takes a bit long and you have nothing better to do than yell at some poor girl as a way to elicit any sort of emotion in your life because at the end of the day, you just want to 
feel like you are doing something. There's that voice in the back of your head that periodically reminds you of this. Hey, remember that goal that you had? Remember how you said you'd start last month? Remember that time where you were naive enough to believe that you could actually do something meaningful with your life? You can try to suppress that voice and maybe you will. You'll become comfortably numb to the fact that you're not doing any of the things that you wanted to do, but it's okay. You've got food on the table, a wife or husband who doesn't absolutely hate you, and the NBA playoffs are on tonight, so at least you can look forward to that, right? But for some of us, that voice can't be silenced by a 401k, pizza, and Netflix on the couch. We need something that we can devote the majority of our waking hours to, or we'll constantly be in an internal hell where that voice in the back of our head endlessly torments us. If something burns your soul with purpose and desire, it's your duty to be reduced to ashes by it. Any other form of existence will be yet another dull book in the library of life. Charles Bukowski said that, and it's a fucking bar. I remember an exact moment when I started to listen to that voice in the back of my head. It was my sophomore year of college at a party my fraternity was hosting. I was the perfect amount of drunk. Not, Not too drunk to where the lights are on, but nobody's home, so you start mumbling nonsense and spitting when you talk, but just enough to where I'd reached the stage where you stop filtering every word, and it seems like thoughts thought seem to transition into words much easier, and it's almost like you have a bit more clarity into what's actually going on in your own head. I was standing there in the corner of the party, just looking at everyone like a fucking weirdo. My friends are laughing and cheering, someone's doing a keg stand, and all the girls decided to wear the same crop top with jean shorts and dirty Air Force Ones. That That's when a siren went off in my head. What are you doing, bro? Why is everyone so happy? What are we celebrating? You mean to tell me you're just gonna pretend like you're okay with this? You know, after this four-year vacation is up, you go into the real world. That means you have to get a real job and clock into work every day for the next 40 years or so. You'll live for the weekends and escape by having beers with your buddies and God forbid you'll start to gain some weight and then you have a gut because you silently hate your life but you're not doing anything about it. And then fast forward a bit and you're on your deathbed, never having found any real purpose or meaning in your life. You just drifted from one day to the next, one boss you hate to be replaced with the next one you hate even more. You have a wife who doesn't really respect you because you kept telling her you were gonna start the business. But now you're about to die and you're kind of running out of time here. Is that what you want? No? Okay, okay. So. What the fuck are you doing? It was at that moment where I decided I was gonna drop out of school and take control of my life. The first step was to find something worth obsessing over. Well, let me rephrase that. The first step was to create something worth obsessing over because purpose and passion isn't something that you just wait around for and then it slaps you in the face. You have to imbue your will into the world. You have to go do something, do anything. I don't know, just start trying shit until something kind of works. And then you start to get addicted to the process because you can feel yourself progressing and it's exhilarating. It's like that state that you reach when you're in a tough workout and you almost begin to fall in love with the pain. Remember that voice in the back of your head I was talking about earlier? You're no longer ignoring it and trying to shut it out. You make friends with it and it guides you to where you need to be. The reward is the flame in your eye that becomes ignited when you're obsessed with any craft. It's the feeling of aliveness that money can't buy. And when you have it, you radiate at a frequency that most people never get to experience. And I first became familiar with this feeling through basketball. I was absolutely obsessed with basketball. I'd go to the gym before school, get shots up, I'd watch film during lunch, and there was nothing more therapeutic to me than spending my nights alone in an empty gym with my obsession. Obviously, my hoop dreams didn't work out the way I originally wanted them to. I'm also so 5'10 and not the most athletic motherfucker in the world, so I probably should have known, but the universe has this weird way of rewarding effort. When you put your all into something, when you become obsessed with something, things just end up falling into place. Just start something. Get over that initial resistance that tells you to bail, and next thing you know, you'll fall in love with the process. Congratulations. Congratulations. You're finally obsessed. So I think this has been good, but it's still a bit incomplete. Like. I made the point, it's like, all right, you need to find something that you can become obsessed with that gives you purpose and meaning and fulfillment. And if you've made it to this point in the video, you also probably understand that that's not something that you just stumble upon. You don't wait around and eventually your obsession, your purpose hits you in the face, but you have to go find it. You have to go create it. But I wanted to end this off here with a bit more practicality. Like, how do you find something that is worth obsessing over and becoming excited about? And if you've ever been addicted to like video games or sports or anything like that, you know the feeling that I'm talking about. How do you find that again? And how is it something that you can actually make money with? And how does it lead to like a fruitful, fun life? So the first thing I'll say on that is you're not going to like 
find it right away. Like if you're trying to build a business or you're just getting started, you'll start something and you'll face this initial resistance and you'll be like, man, I'm not passionate about this. I, I don't think this is the thing for me. I wanna try something else. That's a trap. That's where you're like fooling yourself into thinking that you have to be passionate about the work right away. It's usually once you like start improving, you start making some progress, you begin to fall in love with the progress. I made the analogy to the gym earlier because it's like, I, there's been one time in my life where I was like really obsessed with going to the gym and it was only because I'd look in the mirror every day and I'd be like, holy shit, I'm like actually looking a lot different. And I think it's the same way in business or in any endeavor, once you kind of start to feel that improvement, you see that improvement and you know that it can have a positive impact on your life, you begin to fall in love with the process. And then that's when you begin to get obsessed and you become passionate about the thing that you're working on. You just become passionate about the progress. Yeah. You're a YouTuber? Yeah. Oh yeah? What's Say your, what's uh, up. What's your I, uh, I started last month. Ben Bader. Thank you, man. Thank you. You know, that's so cool, bro. Like, especially, you notice that in a city like Miami, people just root for you a lot more. Like, I, when you're in a small little suburb or some random Midwest town, everybody kind of hates on you. And if you're trying to do anything that's like kind of unique, like I'm sure if you carried a camera around in bumblefuck Idaho, everybody would look at you like you have four heads. But here it's like, oh, that's cool. Like somebody's trying shit, somebody's building something. And then honestly, because you're in Miami, I think most people just assume, I guess I'm also in a Porsche, so that helps. But most people just assume that you're like really successful already. Um, and that's really cool. But anyway. Life and reality is not inherently good or bad. It's what you do with your time here that gives it meaning. Your reality is colored by your perception. Your perception is dictated by your experiences and your experiences are a result of your actions. That was a fucking bar.